out of the past. Phantoms of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale declared insane. This is the church she comes to. There she is, Renee, kneeling in the pew. Third row from the left. What do you think of your rival for your husband's affections? Are you positive that's the same, Madame Jean Renault? I'd stake my honor upon it. Cecil, you've staked your honor so often there's nothing left to it. Madame. Amazing. I wonder how a woman like that could extract such huge sums of money from my husband. She might have certain charms you don't understand. But she's fat and pockmarked. True, Renee. But powerful enough to make you and your children penniless within ten years. How can we break her hold on Pierre? I've tried. Pierre won't listen to me, either as his brother or his lawyer. So there's only one thing left. What's that? Simply that you ask for a commission for lunacy against him. Imply that he's insane and have him locked away. But Pierre is insane. With your political as... prestige at Louis XV's court. I'm sure we can convince a young ambitious judge to the contrary. Pierre's many eccentricities can bear fruit. His monomania on Chinese customs could easily be misinterpreted. Do you understand? But, Cecil, I... Now listen to me. Tomorrow morning, I want you to pay an unexpected visit on your husband. Drive out to that country hollow and... Is your master in, Roger? Madame le Marquise, we weren't expecting you. Do come in. Monsieur is in the study. If you follow me, he'll be pleased to see you, madame. It's been such a long time. Thank you, Roger. Monsieur, Madame le Marquise? Rene. I'm sorry to disturb you, Pierre, but you know what the court says. The separation of ours does not do my reputation any good. Your reputation? Naturally. What are you doing dressed up in that silly outfit? I am writing a history of China, Rene. One can't understand the Chinese mind without trying to feel the tempo of their mode of life. Oh, that's neither here nor there. I've been hearing about the way you're handling the children. The children are well and healthy. I don't feel comfortable about them out here. So I'd like to change nurses. The woman you have now is too old for the job. I've brought an English woman out here with me today. Her name is Maggie Campbell. I think you'll find Maggie a gem in many ways. Your absent-mindedness endangers our children's very existence. What are you hinting at? Hinting? You know very well what I mean. That woman, Madame Jean Renault. She's no concern of yours. My son's future inheritance, however, is my concern. I can't prevent you from throwing it away on a swine-headed woman. Oh, Renée, but really. Really what? Who is this Jean Renault? What power has she got over you? Why do you insist on living in the country and giving her the major part of your income? That's one question you'll never have answered. You wouldn't understand. That's why I've hired Maggie Campbell to act as nursemaid. The children are never to be in that woman's company. And Miss Campbell will follow those instructions to the letter. Well, Renee, I didn't expect you to come back so soon. It didn't take me long to sell Pierre on the idea of hiring your fatuous Miss Campbell, Cecil. What did he think of her? Nothing much. My story was completely believable. We can depend on Maggie Campbell to weave an interesting web for Pierre to stumble into. In the meantime, you've work to do. Work? I've invited young Bianchon for a party at your house this evening. Aren't you presumptuous? Not at all. That fool has always been in love with you. His uncle is a judge of the inferior court, Monsieur Popinot. If you can convince Bianchon to bring his uncle into our camp, our commission for lunacy against Popierre is one. You're in a position to do both of them a great deal of political good. It might be wise to remind them of it, gently. The party is to start it now. Bianchon, I'm so glad you could come to my little party. Oh, you're playing with my heart, madame. Ah. If only I were a free woman, 
free to play with a man's heart. Oh. But my husband being ill... Oh, Pierre's ill? Didn't you know? No. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. It's a mental condition. I thought you knew. Oh. Is there anything that I can do? I'm afraid there's nothing anyone can do. He insists now upon throwing his money away on a woman. Known as Jean Renaud, whom he favors now. Oh, a woman. A fat, ugly, pockmarked woman who is closer to 60 years of age than anything else. He's given her almost a million francs. Oh, this is serious, madame. But what can I do? He controls all the money in the family except my own small income. Well, have you ever thought of securing a commission for lunacy against him? My own husband, Monsieur Bianchon? But it's necessary, madame. My uncle is judge of the inferior courts. He could get it for you quite easily. If you'd consent to visit with him, I'm sure... Bianchon. Yes? Could you persuade your uncle to visit me here in my home? I would repay him for his trouble. A close friend of mine, Philippe Brett, is head of the civil courts. He could do your uncle much good if I suggested it. Oh, but of course, René. I shall pay my uncle Popino a visit this evening. Would tomorrow night be a convenient night for you? So convenient. And if Monsieur Popineau is interested in verifying my case, he might ask Maggie Campbell, my children's nurse, about Pierre's strange actions. A butler in this loony house came over here and bought him. <laughs> yes, Maggie. Uh, what is it now, nurse? Listen to them, will you? A father playing with his sons, a twist in their arms as they scream in agony. Look at them there in the garden. Uh, he's teaching the boys how to wrestle, Maggie. Uh, wrestling's a fine art in China. Mm, wrestling, is it? It's a fine kind of wrestling. A trying to pull the boys' arms out by the sockets. A laughing and a screaming. A maniac's mind. A maniac, I tell you. Even help us. What will the madmen do next? Thank you, driver. Uncle Poppy, no. Uncle Poppy, no. Well, if it isn't my nephew. <laughs> well, well, Bianchon. Come in. Oh, how can you live in this rat trap? Uh, if this is a rat trap, Bianchon, then you should throw your old uncle a piece of cheese. What brings you down here on the banks on this hot day? Oh, a matter of urgency. A friend of mine is in trouble. Mm, trouble. Life was ever thus. Her husband is stark staring mad. And the poor woman hasn't the faintest notion how to go about getting a commission for lunacy. Mm, who is the lady? Madame la Marquise de Spard. Madame de la Marquise? Yes. <laughs> she probably knows more about these things than you do, nephew. Uh, nevertheless, I'll see her when she arrives. She's not well, Uncle. You can't expect her to visit you in a place like... like this. Mm. Besides, she's a close friend of Philippe Brett, and he's the head of the civil courts and can do you a lot of good. That crook? Oh, Poppy, no. Madame le Marquise had the kindness to invite us to dinner at her house tomorrow night. Bien sure, I'm surprised that you... You know very well that I'll be the examining judge on the case... And our courts forbid a judge to dine in a petitioner's home. It's against the law. Oh, yes, I'd, I'd forgotten. After dinner, then, Uncle? Well, she can see me here. In all fairness to her. She's ill, Uncle. Drop in at her house. Was it a request or a demand from her, Bianchon? Both, I imagine, Uncle. Mm. Even a judge is afraid not to grant her demands. A woman like that is a powerful factor at court. Then you will drop in and see her? Yes. Tomorrow afternoon at three. But warn her not to serve any food or drink to me at all. Oh, yes, Uncle. She will be well warned. Maggie, what are you doing prowling uh, about the master's bedroom? I, um, I was looking for a good tonic for the children. The master keeps all the medicines locked up here. 
while I'm about it, uh, you ought to take the tonic, Roger. You don't look so well lately. Oh, I, I never felt better. Oh, spring's uh, coming, Roger. Everybody should take a tonic. Yeah, drink this. You'll feel like a new man in a few seconds. I'll fix up a draw for the children. Uh. I can't figure you out, Maggie. One moment you shout, and the next you worry about my health. That's just my why, Roger. Go ahead. Drink it. I'm a nurse. I ought to know what's good. Go ahead. Drink it. Well, if this will make us better friends, Maggie, I, I'll drink it. Oh, mm. oh, tastes like poison. Roger. Roger. The master's calling, Roger. See what he wants. Uh, I'm coming, Monsieur Le Marquis. Better come along to the study, Roger. I'm expecting a visitor, and I'd better have the place looking spick and span. Visitor, Monsieur? Madame Jean Renault will be here soon. Then the business between Madame and I will be over, finally. Ah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm... Monsieur, uh, look at the study. More Chinese books than all of China. <laughs> I need them. I, uh, I, uh... Uh, what's the matter, Roger? He, he feels so ill, Monsieur Le Marquis. In heaven's name, yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, better sit down know. over here, Roger. I, I don't... I'm... I help me. Uh, oh. Roger! Maggie! Maggie! What's the matter, monsieur? Roger! Roger, old fellow. Roger! He's dead. Dead? His skin is turning black, monsieur. Black? As if he had drunk... Yes. Just as if he drop a strong draught of Chinese poison. How do you know the effect? I'm a nurse, sir. Now your madness is no longer innocent. You're a murderer, too. Poisoning a poor, helpless man just because he disagreed with you. What are you talking about, Maggie? Hey, you know what I'm talking about, monsieur. You're a murderer. A murderer. I'll get the police for you, poisonous, all in the middle of the night. Madame la Marquise, may I present my uncle, judge of the inferior courts, Monsieur Popinel. Good afternoon, Monsieur. How do you do? This is my brother-in-law, the Chevalier de Stein. Say so. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you be seated, Monsieur Popinel? My uncle will do everything in his power to help you, René. I'm sure he will, Bianchon. Tell me, Madame, when you and the Marquis separated originally... How much money were you allowed? Just my original income of 26,000 francs a year. Hmm. You say that the Marquis had given a certain Madame Jean Renault considerable sums of money? Almost a million francs. Hmm. Is there any reason for him to give her money? None. None but an imaginary one dictated to him by his twisted mind. Does Madame Jean Renault live well? Live well? In a mansion? I'm a poor man myself, Madame. How much does Madame Jean Renault spend on her house? Oh, the stables alone cost 16,000 francs. Mm, judges are apt to be incredulous. If the uh, stables alone cost 16,000, then how much for the entire establishment? Between 50 and 60,000 francs. So much? You don't say. Now, how much do you spend for this lovely place? About the same, 50 or 60,000. Renee! Huh? Oh. <laughs> I thought you said your income was only 26,000 francs. You must be badly in debt, obviously. But, monsieur... If you're in debt, the court might not feel justified in allowing you to handle your husband's money. They might think you have a different motive for trying to secure control of your husband's money. Not that I have. A selfish one. Do you serve, madame? Well, I'm sorry, Madame la Marquise. It's against the law for me to eat or drink at the petitioner's home. I thought you knew. Madame la Marquise! Madame la Marquise! Oh, Maggie! 
What are you doing here? I've been trying to get her all day, I have. Missing him, he has murdered his butler. What? Poisoned him. I saw it with my own eyes. Oh. The police came. They've got him away in the jail. He's stark, staring, writhing mad he is. Murder now. Well, Monsieur Popano, is murder a part of a sane man's mind? Such a place for a judge to live. Oh, if I lived here, I'd never make old bones. Monsieur Popino. Yes? I got your summons to come and see you in your house. Well, here I am. Mm, here you are. But who are you? Madame Jean Renault. Mm. Kind of a judge of you anyway, living here. Huh? You must be an honest one. Well, yeah? what do you want to see me about? I've learned that you've been receiving extraordinary amounts of money from Monsieur le Marquis d'Espard. Oh. Well, as a matter of fact, I have. Mm, what seducer's art have you oh. been using on Monsieur le Marquis? Oh, seducer's art? <laughs> Look at me, Monsieur. Fat, ugly, hideous. <laughs> what kind of a vamp would I make? <laughs> well, that's a question I can't answer. But you will have to. Monsieur, I'm sorry, but I am under oath. I can never divulge the reason that Monsieur gives me the money. Madame, if you have any pity for your benefactor, you'll tell me. A commission for lunacy has been taken out against him. Huh? And you're named as having some strange power over him. Oh, oh which is supposed to have driven him mad. Oh, great heavens. I am as good as Monsieur Le Marquis and warn him. He's a saint, that man. A saint, Monsieur. Yes, but he isn't at home. He's in jail. Madame Jean Renault. Monsieur Le Marquis. I'm Judge Popino of the Inferior Court. You're most welcome to come in and share my prison cell. Are you here to accuse me of murdering a man, too? No, monsieur. But your wife has taken out a commission for lunacy against you. Monsieur, you're joking. I wish I were. Your passion for Chinese customs has led them to believe you live in a dream world. I was commissioned to write a book about China by the most respectable firm in all Paris. Have you a contract from them? In my desk drawer at home. Hmm... Are there any duplicate copies in case your copy is stolen? Certainly. Here's the address of the firm. They have the duplicate. The second count is, of course, there's murder. You were accused of murdering your butler just to try out a potency of a new Chinese drug you've discovered. I've never toyed with Chinese drugs or poisons. How about this business of giving all your money to Madame Jean Renault? Monsieur, I never thought I'd tell anyone that secret. Your life depends on it. Madame Jean Renault is the descendant of the Jean Renault family who owned a large estate in Saxony in the 13th century. My ancestors murdered her ancestors and stole that property. What has that to do with you? The entire Despard fortune was founded on that property. I'm trying to pay back a debt, the amount of money which should have been paid to the Jean Renault when the property was taken over. You're too conscientious, Monsieur Le Marquis. I don't want my children to be ashamed of their family as I'm ashamed of mine. They'll always be proud of the Despard name. I don't think we'll have any trouble clearing you of this charge. Tell me this. Is there any place in France where the black Chinese poison can be ordered? One place might have it. It's a small pharmacy called Lincoln. We don't usually carry that particular mixing drug in our pharmacy, Monsieur Popineau. It's too dangerous. But I did have a special order for it from a cockney woman named Maggie Campbell just the other day. She had a note authorizing her to buy it. Who was the note from? From the head of the medical research department through the Chevalier Despard. Mm, thank you very much. Clerk. Clerk. Has Monsieur Le Marquis Despard's contract arrived from Paris? Yes, Monsieur Popineau, this morning. Where is Madame Jean Renault? She's waiting for you now, Monsieur Popineau. Just have her sign this legal bill of sale for the Saxon property and ask her to appear in court tomorrow morning. Yes, monsieur. And the clerk. Yes. Send this letter to the Marquise Despard. After this note, I don't think she'll appear to press charges. Come along, Rene. We'd better go inside the courtroom. It's almost time for the sessions to start. You go ahead, Cecil. I'd like to see Monsieur Philippe Brett before court starts. See you later, then. Oh, my dear Rene, uh, you look charming. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Not at all. 
Here's the letter Monsieur Popino sent me last night and the affidavits you asked for. Mm-hmm. This letter from Popino places you in a very ugly position. It threatens the entire civil courts, besides naming the head of the medical association, Monsieur Brett. Yes, I know, Rene. Leave everything to me. I'll see you in court in a few minutes. Order in the court. The Fifth Court of Inferior Appeals is in session. The first case is a commission for lunacy. The case of Madame de la Marquise Despard against Monsieur la Marquise Despard. Monsieur Pauvin. Yes, Monsieur Brett. As head of the civil courts, I cannot allow you to preside on the bench during this case. Cannot allow me? Do you realize, man, you violated the most important law in all France? I have three sworn affidavits that you partook of tea and cake at the household of René Despard at 5 p.m. four days ago. Now, since Madame is the plaintiff in this case, that renders any decision you might give is invalid. But, Monsieur Brett, they are lying. Your own nephew swears it's the truth. Will you relinquish the bench? Who is to take over in my place? Monsieur Devreux. Devreux? Yes. A man who spends his time currying favor for my majesties? Monsieur, will you give up the bench? I have no option. But if I can't work as judge on this case, I will represent Monsieur de la Marquis Despard as his barrister. Will you ascend the bench, Monsieur Duvreux? Naturally, Monsieur, but the barrister in charge of proceedings will start. That is you, Chevalier Despard. Is it not, Cecil? Yes. Thank you, Monsieur Duvreux. In behalf of my client, Madame la Marquise, a poor innocent woman who has been robbed of her children, her income, and her home by a lunatic husband who is guilty of murder. You only presume he's guilty of murder. I presume nothing, Bobineau. He has already been tried and convicted. When? Ten minutes before court started. I signed the papers, Monsieur Bobineau. You did, Brad? Yes. You haven't the foggiest notion of what this case concerns. I have definite proof that Maggie Campbell was hired to murder the butler. Here it is. My proof that Monsieur Le Marquis is innocent. Judge Tavreau, you can set aside this conviction. Chevalier, let us proceed. A woman named Madame Jarano has forced Monsieur Le Marquis to give her over a million francs. We all know that Monsieur Pauvineau made up that story about the Saxon property to fool the court. But these are lies, Monsieur Tavreau. Continue, Chevalier. And last but not least, we base our claim on the fact that Monsieur Le Marquis thinks he lives in China. Ha! Is that a thought for a sane man? Monsieur Le Marquis is writing a book on China. He has a contract for that book. We investigated the contract, Monsieur Popineau. The Paris firm swears they never drew it up. Mm. You've done well, gentlemen, to make a mockery of the courts of France. This trial is a farce, a framed farce. Of course, you grant the commission for lunacy, you will be heaped with honors by these weakling fools. That is only your opinion, Popenow. Judge Tavro, remember, your conscience will weigh heavily on your soul. If you send this man away, you will have only yourself to answer to. You wake up in the middle of the night screaming for forgiveness to your maker. Think on it carefully, Judge Tavro. Think before you make the decision. There is no need for thought. I demand an immediate decision. There's only one decision I can possibly make. An honest one. A decision dictated to me by my conscience and the evidence on hand. The commission for lunacy is granted. Mr. Devereaux, I'm as sane as you are. You can't lock me up. Pope, now tell them. In heaven's name, stop them. Don't let them. God! Take that man out of court and put him in a straitjacket before he loses his mind completely. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have heard the story declared insane. Bellkeeper's 